Hello, my friends, and welcome back to Let's Play Stormblood. We are fresh off our cryfest, and hopefully we can have some kind of funerary service for Conrad soon. Uh, there is still work to be done and a mystery to be solved. Why in the heck would the Imperials fire on their own tower? So one thing we didn't expect them to do, it's kind of why we, we did with that plan, because we didn't think they would do such a thing. Yeah, that's going to be a problem. So finally, finally, we get mentions of poor Papa Limo. And thankfully, we thankfully see that even though their time together was brief and they shared, well, like, one scene and a couple lines together that her encounter with Hien has left her for the better and, you know, served to, to help inspire her. And that's a good thing, you know? Not, not to rant and rave again, but I, I really wish they, they would have had more time and more moments between the two because I think it would, it would do better um, leading up into this and definitely help put her into the position that she would be more deserving of this leadership position, you know, that, that, that she would, she would be more willing to, to take it up, not just because she was asked to, you know? Yeah, see, that would have been that would that would have been such a better thing if if Lise had kind of come into this position on her own. Now, again, we did see see foreshadowing of this was Conrad's intent this this whole time, but even though they had to pick some kind of dramatic moment to do the official passing of of the torch, I think it would have been better for, for Elise to, to kind of take charge of it herself and then have somebody bring it up to her after the fact that, you know, this this was by Conrad's creds, you know, have her be unsure of it and have her be like, you know, somebody mentioned no, you know, even if it was just us. I don't know how many other people he might have told about this plan um, besides us. I mean, he could have told Monago for all we know. And, you know, inspire her, her confidence in 
taking up the leadership role. I think that the story would have been, and her character would have been much better off had they taken that direction. Okay, so no new dialogue there. All right. So Lise knows just the spot where we can meet to check on things. And oh boy, you're, you guys are in for another rant. I know you probably had enough of it, but this is exactly why I am, I've been doing this series to begin with. Not just to go through the story for the sake of going through the story, but you know, taking, taking a closer look at you know, what I think its successes and its failings are, and, and whatnot. Oh, I'm not on my white mage. Whoops. I need to turn on Dark Side. I, I intentionally put switched to my Dark Knight for this episode, right after I knew the last one, but uh, mostly because to get myself uh, more even experience on my Dark Knight, but just the muscle memory of spending the last several, several episodes on my white mage. I'm, I immediately start going into my white mage combos. Alright, so enough of that guardian golem. Well, I hope you brought some rock climbing equipment. Because that looks kind of steep. Aw, hugs. Well, you just need to be you. That's it. Did we not already go through this? <laughs> we just had a major antagonist who did this sort of thing. Yeah! So yeah, we're never going to find out why that cannon was disabled. We know as players who exactly is responsible for it, but they're never gonna know. And there is something just insanely hilarious about the fact that they're gonna be like, well, fortune is favoring us and and and, and all that, and it's like, well, doesn't really matter, the thing is busted right now anyway, so let's not worry about that over much right now. 
So before we continue with the next quest, a minor annoyance from the story. Yeah, remember how I told you I would not shut up about the Charlaines and I'm not going to for the any time in the foreseeable future? Yeah, uh, I really wish Lise had gone into- can we even see it from here? Just- yeah, okay, maybe a little. It's a bad angle, but it'll have to work for now. That it is important to note, and I really wish the narrative had mentioned this because it's another wasted opportunity for Lise's character and Lise's past. This ship, which as she said, was created to save people from the Flood at the end of the Sixth Astral Era. The creator of this arc is none other than the guy, and I'm not going to pronounce his name because I can't, because he's a sea wolf, was the founder of what is now Charlayan. You know, the place where Ida took her and that she grew up and spent much of her youth in. I mean, that definitely explains how she, you know, she probably knew about this place. Um, well, technically, I suppose she could have heard it from, from, you know, she lives in this area. She could have heard stories from, from either end, but I really wish that was kind of exposited more because it's, it would have been a great segue into her talking about, you know, her, her home life in Charlayan and how it hasn't, hasn't shaped her as, as a person. And I was planning on partially leaving this at the, the very end of, uh, the 4.0 patch when I went more into Lisa's character, but I think I'm just going to put it in now just for, for convenience's sake, that her lack of up her mention of upbringing besides like one line here or there in Charlene really kind of hurts, you know, I feel is a detriment to the writing of her character because they could have used that to more easily segue into why she has so many doubts about what she can do. Charlene is a nation of scholars, and we've already seen quite a bit, and it's reinforced a bunch of times, and even I've reinforced it, that, you know, she's quote-unquote the dumb one among the Scions, despite growing up in an area that, that is full of scholars. Lise is not book smart. But growing up in a nation and around people who are may have just kind of alienated her and being like, this is not where I, I belong. I, you know, I feel very much an outcast in the very place I grew up. And thus, that helps to explain why, you know, she goes and takes Eda's place and, and why she's so, you know, gung-ho to, to help the people of, of the homeland that she has very little memories of. Now, part of that is just her, just her character in general, as, as we saw in Doma, that much like Alize, she just can't stand to watch people people suffer. She needs to sit, she needs to do something about it. She just cannot stand it. So that that definitely plays plays a role into her to into you know her her desire to to free the Alamegans as well. But I think it would have done her done her much better had they you know they mentioned that more the fact that even though this place. You know, she doesn't have personal attachment to this place, you know, on her own merits. You know, these are these are still her people. These are her roots. And if Charlene is not the life for me, perhaps back home is where I should begin. And that they don't really make mention of that, I think just, just really, really hurts it. Because it, it would just do her so much good to, you know, just add that bit of exposition, you know, because again, she grew up in Charlayan. Why don't we ever mention Charlayan more? Because it very definitely plays into the characters that are the Scions and the choices they make. And especially in this expansion, Lise especially. She doesn't talk about it. And again, for the reasons I stated, maybe there's a reason she doesn't talk about it. She's not book smart in a, in a place that has a bunch of book smart people. It's very easy to see you know why she would just feel that she does not belong in that place especially being a refugee but that part is never mentioned at all and it really should have been like even just one line of dialogue here or there like I'm not asking them to harp on about it just you know nearly as much as I have but it's they don't use it to help explain her character or her, ap her apprehensions at all and they really should have and especially, you know, you have Charlene's here, you know, have them talk a little bit about 
this arc, like especially with Ali Zay, you know, and what Lise even just mentioned about, you know, how there's more people in the past who who do things to save save their fellow man, and and they're not just people of legend; they're real people. And that's you know that's one thing that Ali Zay does. That that's part of what drives her. Is she like Lise? She can't stand. I'm just, I want to talk to Pippin. Dang it! Damn, I have to go around the table. That she just cannot watch people suffer and have them both, you know, look to this arc and and be reminded of that, that they're not just legends, they're, they're real people and the evidence is staring right in front of you atop of those cliffs, you know? And it's still guarded to this very day, nearly 1600 years later. Well, we saw the smoke. Yeah, so all right. We're not we're not going to attack out in full force. We're 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 going to we're gonna make this a small-scale operation, just to be absolutely sure. Four of us going together on an adventure again. It's kind of worrying how we haven't heard anything from Thancred lately. Yeah, I do recall that day. Yeah, thanks for volunteering me, by the way. I would have gone anyway, but... Yeah, he's still worried about Kryle. As are we all. It's been quite a while and really worried about Thagrid. We as the players know that he's found her, but the rest of us certainly do not. I need to get myself a fancy new weapon. Let's put that on. Before I forget. And I don't think he would have anything new. No. Okay. Alright, good to see you've been a busy boy while the rest of us have been dealing with other things. Oh, we have a password! Oh, this is fantastic. Totally fantastic. Why has this not been a thing before this point? It's worth noting, and I probably mentioned this back in the Heaven's Ward Let's Play, that when Minfilia was in charge of the Scions, we had a secret password, we had a safe house and everything, and then everything fell apart, and we haven't had such a thing since, and we really should reestablish such a kind of connection or means of contact or some kind of secret passcodes or other such things so we can properly identify each other because our Lake Pearls just keep getting freaking jammed at the worst possible moments and everything and... Ugh.
Well, I don't see purple smoke around this destination point, so... I hope you guys are wrong about that. Phew, okay. So it almost seems really silly that we still have a gate guard and a loading screen to go from one side of the door to another. Now, I know it's because this whole place is not under our active control or anything, but you have an Alamegan gate guard and stuff, so... J just, just, just save the trouble for the players and just have some kind of small opening again. I'm going full white mage rotation on here. Just have some kind of, you know, just small opening for, for us to go through, you know? And unlike the bridge at Veladonia, I don't think that will ever actually be open for permanent access. Uh, it eventually will become irrelevant once we can fly in this area anyway, so that's not necessarily like, the worst thing, but it's just something annoying that honestly should not be there, you know? Oh, you at least do all the heavy lifting. You silly. And of course, there's more of them. Of course. Did you expect anything more or less? No, you didn't. Oh, another one of you things. Well, not sure how the heck a hexadrone sneaks up upon us, but... Well, there you go. You guys want to pause the video and look at that fate description? Yeah, that's that's kind of gruesome, but also hilarious. Ah, oh, damn it! I wanted to talk to Elf and Elf. Damn it! <laughs> no, no, we're gonna talk to you first. Okay. Actually, no, I can't try that on because I'm not on that damn character right now. Ugh. I keep doing that. Yes. But what kind of question is she going to ask, ask us? Because <laughs> it'll be really awkward if she, she asks, Who are you? What are you doing? And we just shrug our hands up and go... Courage? You know? But at least we have a vague description that, you know, it is a Roganin woman, so... <laughs> that narrows it down the field quite a bit because most of the people around here are, you know, Highlanders, stuff like that. Um, Alpha, no, I don't know <laughs> if putting it that way is, is going to get you the answers you want because they, they're probably going to think you're a teenage pervert or something like that. Well, that's technically not exactly a question, but but I do like how one of the options harkens back to our previous Scion password of Wild Rose. I do like callbacks like that.
So apparently we're gonna call our friends off screen, all right. Or we can handle it that way. That's interesting enough, all right. And the one time they should automatically just teleport me instead of making me walk over here, they don't. Well, only my friends. Should we mention that to her? That there was four of us, not just me. Oh, if only you knew who it was. Oh, you are the best. So yeah, we need to make sure that this thing is completely disabled. Sabotage. I don't think it's gonna be as simple as just hitting the off switch, but... No, I don't want to talk to you. I want to talk to you. Yeah. Yeah, you're a good friend helping us. Gotta love spies who are on our side. You know, they've been kind of in, in short supply for for the main scenario thus far. But I'm, I'm really kind of glad that they're... They're trying to involve them in some way, somehow, and that they're being extremely helpful in moving the plot along and getting the information when we need it, and only when we need it. You know, we don't want them to get caught and have our conversations overheard and risk outing ourselves unless absolutely necessary. So that's going to be it for this episode. Thank you guys very much for watching, and I'll see you then.